Good morning. Today is Sunday, July 9th, 2023. I just finished a remarkable novel. I recommend it highly to you. The title is The Winners by Frederick Backman. I really enjoyed it. I hope to read some others by him. The Winners by Frederick Backman. And he writes a line at a certain moment in the novel, this hurts too much to touch with words. Our preoccupation with Jerusalem these days is like that. It hurts too much to touch with words what it was and meant to us, what its destruction did to us, what we miss. And this is what we grapple with during these three weeks, culminating in Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, that commemorates the destruction and the day after, because there is a day after, and the Shabbos after, which we refer to as Shabbos Nachamu, the Sabbath of comfort, the Sabbath of being comforted by God. It's too much to touch with words. So I found another medium, which I think perfectly conveys the complexity, the ambiguity, and the mystery of Jerusalem. It's hard to see in this photo, but it is a single small installation in the courtyard of Migdal David that we toured last week in Jerusalem. And the leaves that you see at the bottom, the green leaves, they are blown glass set among the ancient stones of the Tower of David. And this is the work of Dale Chihuly. Now, you may be familiar with this work. Let me make this larger. This is one of his famous pieces called The Sun, which has been in Montreal at the Museum of Fine Arts, and it is sometimes brought back during the summertime. And it is a remarkable work, all of blown glass pieces that are fitted together that captures the energy and the beauty of the sun. I first saw Chihuly's work in Jerusalem in 2000. Are you able to see this photo? Is this photo showing? If someone could give me a hands up, yes. So this is a photo at night of the Chihuly installation in 2000 at the same location, Migdal David, the Tower of David. And you'll notice different lit pieces in different parts of this courtyard. In fact, this installation holds the world record for the most visitors to a temporary exhibit. So let me show you a bit more of it. This is what it looks like during the daytime. And you notice, for example, these yellow pieces here, this blue tower here, all blown glass, but set in the backdrop in the midst of this ancient stone. Here's a close-up of that tower. You get a sense of proportion by the artist, Dale Chihuly, standing next to it, and an idea of how it is created, what it is made out of. This is another piece during the daytime. And again, you see it, the backdrop of that stone arch. But then look at this. 
This is the same piece, but illuminated at night. Here is a piece of blown glass. This is at what was the entrance uh, acting as a chandelier hanging from the ce ceiling. And then finally, this piece, which is not the most dramatic, but the piece that really made an impression on me to see these beautiful, fragile, very modern, um, round pieces of blown glass sitting nestled among this very harsh, hard, ancient stone. And I must tell you that seeing that exhibit moved me very, very deeply. Seeing the modern fragile glass set among the ancient stones of Jerusalem it captured for me visually and emotionally and spiritually the essential truth of Jerusalem, its contradictions, its potential up against its reality, the challenge it forces every one of us to confront. One person who comes close to putting this into words for me is Sarah Tuttle Singer. I have quoted her to you before. She was born in Los Angeles. She made Aliyah. She is raising two children. And she is living and writing in Jerusalem. So let me share just a couple of stories that she tells that to my mind, take those, the images of the glass against the stone and bring it to life in words. She tells a story 10 days after she landed in Israel when her son got really sick. We went to the clinic. They sent us to the ER. And then the doctor thought that they should keep her son for a couple of days. And of course, she's in a new place. She doesn't yet know the language. She certainly doesn't know the system. And her son is sick. And she's afraid. And she says, there were two other women in the room with me, a woman with her head covered, who recited Tehillim Psalms for her sleeping child, also sick. And a woman from Belarus who listened to Russian rap while holding her weak child. She writes, hours in a hospital are meaningless, and we measured time by the doctor's rounds and what food appeared on the plastic trays. We understood without words, but with tired smiles, that whoever's child was sleeping was in charge of getting coffee for the rest of us. And so we rocked our babies in that little room while we waited for the next doctor's visit or the next meal. The young woman from Belarus told her in Hebrew, just as fractured as her own, call Yisrael arevim ze lazer. All of Israel is responsible one for another. And the religious mother nodded it handed us each a cup of water. So Sarah says, we were released before the other mothers and their babies. And the day after, I went back again to the hospital with soda and chips and cookies for them. They were still there, stuck in that little room with their children. It was a humbling perspective to have. We were outside the hospital walls while they were still there waiting for fevers to break and positive news from the doctors. Call Yisrael Arevim Zelazeh. 
all Israel is responsible for one another. They would have done it for me. Why am I telling you this? Because I'm remembering what it was like to be in that little awful room with two women so different from me. And I'm remembering what the Belarusian mother said in Hebrew as broken as mine. Kol Yisrael arevim zelazeh. All Israel is responsible for one another. Sometimes we forget. In between our differences that divide us. In between the way we see things and the way we bicker, but really, we're all just people wanting our kids to be okay. And when we can see clear to that, we will show up for one another with no questions asked. That's Jerusalem. Sarah wrote, the city of Jerusalem is my happy place. I love the people, so many people, exquisite, fascinating people, a river of faith and fabric flowing past. And I just sit and bask in the blessed humanity of it all as it watches over me. I remember a guy once next to me passed out cold on the ground, not from too much to drink, but from a sudden drop in blood sugar. He lay there pale and still while his friend shouted for something sweet. And no joke, three shopkeepers came running, two religious Jews and one Arab, one with mangoes, another with a piece of watermelon, a third with fresh orange juice. And that's the thing about Israel. People care. They care and they show up. It's one of the reasons why when someone asked me what I love best about Israel, I can answer without hesitation. The people. And then she wrote, my favorite street in the old city of Jerusalem has two names, Al-Wad in Arabic, Haggai in Hebrew. It's the street that leads you from Damascus Gate to the Western Wall, the holiest site where Jews are allowed to pray. It's also the street where a quick turn and a step or two takes you down a little road to one of the Aqsa Gates, one of Islam's holiest sites and a spiritual and political flashpoint between Jews and Muslims. The street smells like coffee and ripe strawberries and saffron. You can buy bags of pink and blue almonds and Christmas lights during Ramadan to illuminate the night. There's also a yeshiva, heavily guarded. The mothers push Pink strollers quickly from the front. They don't stop even if their baby is crying. They keep walking fast, their eyes moving left and right until they reach the Jewish quarter. And then they stop and breathe. Late at night, you can hear the guys in the yeshiva singing. During the day, you can hear Palestinian hip hop. Five times a day, you can hear the call to prayer. And on Friday afternoons, you hear the Shabbat siren. There are a lot of kids, Jewish, Arab, they're the same ages, and they play the same games. But I've never seen them play together. And then there are the border police who are stationed at the major intersections, they mostly point their guns down until they don't. It's that street. And it's my favorite because it is an injured artery from Jerusalem's holy heart to the rest of us. And terrible things have happened. But lovely things have happened too.
And it's the street that I walk the most because if you expect to find a miracle in Jerusalem, you have to start looking in a place like this where all roads, beautiful and terrible, meet. And finally, this piece. That's the thing you need to understand about Jerusalem. She is alive. And she cannot be conquered or controlled. She may let you think that you're in charge for a little while, but no one can rule her. Just look at history if you don't believe me. She brings mighty armies to their knees. Empires have crumbled clutching her. But if you know this about her and embrace it and you let her lead, you can be there and enjoy the days with her. But don't mess with her or she will cleave you in two and spit you back out and leave you empty to rot out there in the desert. I am not harassed or heckled or spit on or threatened. I just am. And here's how it works. I say hello, people say hello back. I ask them how they're doing. They ask me how I'm doing. I respect them. They respect me. I watch their backs. They watch mine. Because we all have to live here with her with Jerusalem of stone and blood and all her compulsions and all her moods. And I'll tell you a secret I've learned. She's absolutely lovely when we are good to each other in her wild embrace. That's the mystery of Jerusalem. Fragile, modern glass set in ancient stones. Marcy and I were walking through Nachlaot, one of the oldest neighborhoods outside the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. It's a marvelous neighborhood of very, very narrow alleyways. And as we were walking, Marcy's foot was sore. I had had the same problem years earlier, and I knew a stretch that would help her. So we stopped, and we leaned against the ancient stone wall, and we were standing side by side, stretching our legs. And a woman came behind us and said, Thank you for holding up Jerusalem. And we said, it's our pleasure. This is what I can do. This is what Sarah can do. And this is what Dale can do. And this is what every one of us must try to do, especially now different ways of holding up Jerusalem. My friends, I wish you a great day and I look forward to seeing you all soon in person.